What was amazing about him was, is it seemed like the farther you went, the faster you went. It, his stamina was unbelievable. Uh, it, it, all out at a mile and a quarter, I'm, I'm not too sure you didn't see one of, one of, if not the fastest horse you, 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 you'd ever see. I mean, I hate to say that, you know, compare us to Secretary, which was an incredible horse and probably has a little bit of a higher number, but Airgate was probably, his numbers were very close to his. Arrowgate, what a commanding performance. He won the Travers by 12. Harrogate was a really straightforward, you know, kind of horse. He was a kind of, you know, don't mess around with me, man. It's business all the time. Songbird, on the other hand, around the barn, she, you could just love all over all you wanted. But it was funny, as soon as you started to tack her up, uh, there was no more loving, man. It was time to go to work as well. So they were very, both very focused, you know, horses uh, in their career as far as racing goes. Songbird, she's got them beaten to a frazzle. How'd you like to earn 60 grand as easily as this? Songbird wins by, well, whatever she felt like. Airgate had one of the, the well, he had won the, the Dubai World Cup, and that was impressive. And, and to watch the horse run and the, the way he drops his head and, and, and moves, he, he's, just, he's just this impressive creature. And, uh, and so, obviously, we were drawn to that. The Judmont team, Garrett had, had approached us about possibly using the horse, and, and, uh, and we spent a lot of time on, on pedigree and matings. We were honored to have Songbird in Airgate's first book. I mean, first off, she was 13 for 14 on the racetrack, but of those races, nine of them were grade ones, uh, I think at seven different tracks. And, you know, not many horses ever achieve, you know, that kind of greatness. So to take a young mare like her and a young stallion like ours who had had similar accomplishments on the track and breed them together was a special opportunity. A lot of folks will go, how could you breed a maiden to a maiden? And, and that's a fair argument. In this particular situation, you're, you're looking at two exceptional individuals and I think Manny thought it was worth a shot to take it with Airgate and uh, just because of the, how exceptional the two of them were. She could have gone to any horse in the world to breed Songbird to, and she actually mentioned that after she bought her was, she was thinking about Galileo, uh, tap it, Frankel, and you know, she picked Airgate. You take two horses that are very similar in their running styles, very similar in their accomplishments and breed them together, and yeah, that's exciting. We got what we wanted in the foal. Uh, initially, uh, it, it was a, it, uh, excuse the term, but it was a mini-me for Songbird. Uh, it, it might as well have been her twin just in a foal size. Um, great hind leg and, and, uh, and lovely shoulder. When you have a maiden mare like that, sometimes you, you, you don't expect big, strong foals. This is a big, strong foal. The horse has a lot of leg. What we did uh, in, doing, in doing that mating, uh, it's so far so good. It looks, it looks like it's, it's what exactly we wanted. Uh, just a ton of quality, really, overall. It's, you couldn't hope for more with this first foal. And um, she's been a great mother to the foal. I think they're very pleased with what they have. It's pretty remarkable how much more leg and, and, and scope we're getting with the foal. Stay healthy so I can maybe get an opportunity to, to maybe ride her. I, I'm hoping anyway, maybe down the road. Uh, I plan on riding another three, four, five years, so there's a good chance.